Every month, a ton of brand new games come out, and we put together a list of the biggest ones so you know what to look out for. Hi right, folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the top 10 new games of June 2021. Starting out with number 10, it's Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts 2. Now, if you can think back to 2019 Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts, this was a game that was a pretty big departure from Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. 3 was a big open world game, had all the trappings of an open world game, positive and negative, while Contracts simplified the formula, gave you three miniature open world maps, but instead of just plopping you onto them and letting you do what you do, the game was entirely mission based, a lot more structured, and that's what we're seeing here with Sniper Ghost Warrior 2. Now, I kind of prefer this structure to the open world structure. I think that it was a positive development for the series. However, there were a few flaws in the first one, like for instance, the story was kind of meh, and they were like really light on gadgets for whatever reason. Like they had them, but there wasn't enough. I'm hoping they remedy that stuff with Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts 2 because the original is really a solid game and I think a good development for the genre. Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts 2 comes to Windows, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X and S on June 4th. At number 9 is the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection. Ninja Gaiden is a fantastic third person hack and slash ninja game that is hard as hell and we're getting ports of the best versions of the first two as well as the third game which was a more recent game frankly the first two were early 2000s games and had gotten ported to the playstation 3 and as far as i'm concerned having a look at how they have it looking now it looks great i would not say it looks like a game from the early 2000s I would not say that it looks completely modern or completely brand new or anything, but it looks really good. It's a big improvement graphically and from the looks, everything is intact gameplay wise. These are very fast paced games, very oriented towards combos, at times even kind of feel like a fighting game in 3D, but it can also be a punishing action game. Like I said, it predates the Dark Souls series by quite a bit, but I think players sometimes may feel that same kind of frustration, albeit with a pretty different gameplay style. As far as I'm concerned, not only is it a great fast paced arcadey hack and slash action game, it's also in a lot of ways a precursor to Neo. It's the same development team. I'm quite excited to play the games again. It's landing on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and Microsoft Windows on June 10th. At number eight is Scarlet Nexus an upcoming action RPG from Bandai Namco. This is an action RPG where you get to choose between two characters that both have various psychokinesis powers as well as different stories. It takes the anime aesthetic and really ups the ante as far as I'm concerned. It is a very different looking game despite, you know, looking like an anime movie slash game. Like it obviously uses that aesthetic, but in a way that I haven't really seen. It's very color themed, kind of dark, but also very colorful in a different way. Very red, very warm, but also the combat looks to blend some psychokinetic powers with various technology and weapons in a way that looks fun. Now this game comes to us from the same folks that gave us Code Vein. However, they've explained it's a little more near Automata than Dark Souls. And frankly, I'm here for that. Near Automata is fantastic. And the aesthetic of this game also looks fantastic. I think it could be very good. Scarlet Nexus is landing on PlayStation 4 and 5, Xbox One and Series X, as well as Microsoft Windows on June 25th. At number seven is Solar Ash, the second game from Heart Machine the developers of the absolutely phenomenal game Hyperlight Drifter. Now, where Hyperlight Drifter is a kind of Legend of Zelda Diablo type game, Solar Ash is kind of a different thing. It is open world like a more recent Zelda game, but traversal is anything but normal. It is very fast paced. It takes place inside a black hole and it's all about stopping your home planet from being sucked in and destroyed by the black hole. Your character skates around this world very fast, does a lot of jumping, has a grappling hook, and has some pretty slick combat moves in terms of various enemies, which then scale to become larger and larger as you continue. Honestly, the style is beautiful, has kind of a journey meets neon sunset vibe to it. It's a game I really want to play, to be frank. That is coming June. We don't have the exact date, 
but it is landing on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Microsoft Windows sometime during the month. At number six is Chivalry 2. Now this, this is a big title. Chivalry came out a long time ago, originally for Windows way back in 2012. Itself was a update of a mod that came out for Half-Life 2 called Age of Chivalry. Basically, it was a hack and slash multiplayer thing that just killed. It's such a good, like, fun multiplayer experience. It's just different from anything else. I mean, you've seen stuff since that has definitely taken some degree of influence from Chivalry, but this is the original, and I'm just really excited to see Chivalry 2 come in and kind of show us the biggest, grandest possible version of the original game. I'm particularly interested to see how Chivalry 2 stands up next to Mordhau, because Mordhau is a game that I think owes a very large amount to the original game. For all intents and purposes, Chivalry 2 should be really good. That's going to be landing on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and Windows on June 8th. At number five is Legend of Mana, an interesting kind of acknowledgement that the 2D versions of some of the other Mana games maybe were more well-revered. The 3D ones certainly weren't bad, but there is something about the original games that is really hard to replicate without actually just replicating it. Legend of Mana does an absolutely gorgeous job upscaling all the graphics. I don't know if they started with AI upscaling and then had artists just touch it up, make it look nicer, but it looks phenomenal. I am so excited to play this game on these absolutely beautiful remastered versions of these backgrounds. I think Square has really outdone themselves here, and I really hope this is kind of the standard in terms of remakes going forward from Square of older two-dimensional games. In any case, I will be playing this. It's landing on PC, PS4, and Nintendo Switch on June 24th. And number four is Mario Golf Super Rush, which brings us a similar experience to previous Mario Golf games, albeit with some new modes like Speed Golf, which actually has players racing to the hole against other people on the hole itself. It's honestly a really interesting variation on golf, and it should be fun for different players to have to take turns taking different shots and dealing with different obstacles. Everyone will have different special moves and abilities that can actually change the environment to be a hazard to other players, etc. It looks like it's actually a pretty fun idea. And then of course, Mario Golf is also a really fun golf sim. Is it 100% the simulation? Absolutely not. It's a bunch of Mario players playing golf, but it's also a really fun, good golf game that is landing on Nintendo Switch on June 25th. And number three is Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade, which gives us an upgraded version of the original remake which is funny to say, but basically there's a couple of different things that are going on here. If you have the original Final Fantasy VII Remake, you can get the graphical upgrades as an upgrade to PlayStation 5. However, there is also another episode of story that actually goes on in the Intergrade version starring Yuffie and actually has stuff that we did not see in the original game. I will absolutely say I'm very much ready to move on in the Final Fantasy VII story. I'm not that interested in dwelling in Midgar a lot longer. That being said, I don't hate Yuffie either. Yuffie is a fun character, and I also just thoroughly enjoy how they set up the remake's gameplay. So will I play it again? Maybe. I will definitely play the Yuffie episode. Currently, we're talking about a PlayStation 5 exclusive, and it's landing on June 10th. At number two is Guilty Gear Strive, a complete reconstruction of the franchise, as said by the developers, Arc System Works, looking to make this thing into something big, new, but familiar for people who love the series itself. Despite it being pretty much a reboot of the series gameplay and graphically wise, it does continue the story of Guilty Gear Xrd. I don't know how to say that out loud. One of the cool things that they're adding here is something called a wall break, which will have different stage transitions based on performing the move. Like you'll go to different areas of the stage. The trademark fake 2D, 3D graphics of the Guilty Gear series are here where the game is actually in 3D, but they've painstakingly animated everything to look like it is 2D. And just to say it, like 
Guilty Gear is a great fighting game series. That's going to be landing on PC, PS5, and PS4 on June 11th. I would highly recommend it if you like fighting games, and particularly if you just like really cool anime-looking fighting games, because it lands in every possible way in terms of that. And finally, at number one, it is Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. This is a game that I have been looking forward to since the PS5 announcement video that they did for it. Honestly, they managed to give us a tech demo and a taste of a really cool looking game at once. I talk about this probably every time I talk about the game because it's so impressive. The way that they created teleporting that just instantaneously loads new areas off of the solid state drive that is proprietary to the PlayStation. Just lightning quick in terms of data transfer. It is really impressive because it shows just how this generation of games is going to be different or at least could be different if everybody follows these design philosophies honestly ever since that remake of ratchet and clank in 2016 which took basically all of the ideas from the whole series and sort of reimagined the first game with a lot of those ideas incorporated i have been jonesing for a new ratchet and clank game i was really excited when they revealed it in 2020 and I'm really happy that we're not waiting a super long amount of time after the PlayStation 5 came out for Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart to come out. It is, of course, a system seller and an exclusive for PlayStation 5. Insomniac is part of Sony now, and they're just not playing around at all. They're like, yeah, just buy a PlayStation 5. I'll definitely be playing this game on June 11th when it lands, and I would recommend you do as well if you like the series. Couple of bonus games for you are a new chapter in The Elder Scrolls Online called Gates of Oblivion, which is the start of a new storyline we'll see throughout all of ESO's 2021 stuff. That's coming on PC, PS4, and Xbox One June 1st. And then a native version is coming for PS5 and Xbox Series X on June 8th. Then World of Warcraft Burning Crusade Classic lands on January 16th. We've talked about that elsewhere on the channel. There's been a little bit of controversy, but it's still a classic expansion. That's landing June 1st. That is all for today. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We have little brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.